Hi all, uh, let us uh, continue with the discussion on our uh, pricing and valuation of commodity derivative contracts. Now if you recall in the last session we discussed about uh, how uh, the cost of carry model uh, is used to value any derivative con futures contract, uh, any derivative futures contract. So we will continue with uh, that example. We also discussed about whenever there is any uh, deviation from the cost of model pricing, there is a arbitrage opportunity in terms of cash and carry arbitrage and reverse cash and carry arbitrage. Now let us take an example of a commodity underlying and to check how this uh, cash and carry arbitrage and reverse cash and carry arbitrage can be executed in a real life situation. So this is just a summarization, uh, you know uh, we discussed uh, this aspect in detail in the previous session. So we, uh, you know if the actual price is greater than the theoretical price, we will undertake gas and carry arbitrage and if actual price is less than the theoretical price, we will undertake the reverse gas and carry arbitrage. Now let us take an example of a, uh, you know, a commodity contract. In case of a commodity underlying, we have storage cost associated with uh, uh, you know uh, storing a particular commodity besides the cost of buying the commodity. So along with the S0, we have to add the present value of the storage cost to uh, find out the uh, case, uh, cost of carry model based uh, forward or future price. Now how, where do we get this uh, storage cost? So the storage cost again exchanges inform us what is the storage cost. So this is a typical example of uh, you know exchanges uh, letting us know what is the storage cost. This particular document I have downloaded from National Commodity Derivative Exchange website. So uh, if you see this Bajra uh, which is stored in Alwar uh, warehouse, it costs around uh, 4.20 rupees per day for one metric ton of storage and besides this you also have uh, you know another cost which is assaying rate quality as, uh, assessment rate which costs about uh, 800 rupees for 30 metric ton. So from time to time exchanges uh, inform us what is the cost of storage and this has to be incorporated into the uh, forward price modeling. Now let us take an example. Let us take uh, this example uh, of uh, gold and uh, we will uh, work out how cash and carry and reverse cash and carry arbitrage can be undertaken in this context. Let us say a uh, spot price on 30th May 2016 the spot price at Ahmedabad uh, gold is 28,408 rupees and what is the storage charge? Storage charge comes to 7.5 pesa per 10 gram per day and what is the cost of borrowing? Cost of borrowing I have assumed as 10 percent for uh, continuously compounded rate and I have calculated the forward price or uh, forward price for uh, 3 um, maturity period that is 4 days, 67 days and 128 days respectively. And why have I chosen this? I have chosen this, uh, these 3 days coinciding with the maturity period of 3 contracts which are traded at MCX exchange. So uh, M1 contract which is maturing on 3rd June 2016 has a maturity period of 4 days. So by using the cost of carry model and the storage cost what we are getting as a theoretical uh, forward price is 28,439 as our theoretical forward price for M1 contract. And uh, similarly uh, the forward price calculated forward price uh, or theoretical forward price for other two contracts are 28,939 and 29,421 respectively. And what is the market price or F actual, actual price prevailing at MCX is 28,525 for the near month contract, 28,775 for the next month contract. 
Now let's take an example. Uh, now let's take uh, this. Uh, you know, we compare these two sets of prices to know whether uh, arbitrage is possible or not. Let's compare the first price, uh, first set of price. That is the theoretical price vis-a-vis -vis the actual price. So, what is the theoretical price? Theoretical price is twenty-eight thousand four hundred thirty-nine, and actual price is twenty-eight thousand five hundred twenty-five. So f actual is greater than f theoretical so we will be able to undertake cash and carry arbitrage so uh, what is going to be our cash and carry arbitrage strategy we will borrow cash we will buy gold and simultaneously enter into contract to sell forward uh, sell futures contract so this is the question to my, uh, my question to all of you so so answering uh, to the uh, you know to the discussion uh, that what is going to be the arbitrage profit when the trader is going to undertake cash and carry arbitrage it shows the cash and carry arbitrage to be 86 rupees so the calculation of uh, is given here so on spot day the trader uh, you know borrows uh, 28408 rupees buys 10 gram of gold and stores it for 4 days and pays the storage cost up front and, uh, uh, and uh, on the maturity day uh, simultaneously the trader also enters into a forward contract or a short forward or short futures contract. Similarly on the expiry date it undertakes other set of transactions which leads to an arbitrage profit of 86 rupees. Now let us go back to our the now let us focus on the M2 contract. In case of a M2 contract, what is the theoretical price? Theoretical price is 28,939 and actual price is 28,775. So when these two prices we are comparing, you, it can, you can see that the actual price is less than theoretical price. So that means we will be able to undertake reverse cash and carry. So, as part of the reverse cash and carry arbitrage, what should be our strategy? Okay, our strategy is going to be our uh, strategy is going to be that on the on the spot date we will be selling gold from our own inventory. S uh, so, we will sell the gold and whatever uh, gold we are holding, uh, whatever money we will be uh, receiving by selling the gold, we will be investing it for uh, you know 67 days and simultaneously we will enter into a long futures position at 28,775 and on the contract expiry date we will be making a profit of 164 rupees. So these are the examples of how traders in real life can take uh, cash and carry arbitrage and reverse cash and carry arbitrage. Now uh, my question to all of you is that is the cash, uh, theoretical price going to be a single point or it is a range of pri uh, prices? The answer is it is going to be range of prices. Now let us focus on to. So this particular document, uh, this particular detail shows that this is our theoretical price. We have calculated theoretical price and if f actual is to the right of this that means more than this theoretical price we will have cash and carry arbitrage and if it less than um, the theoretical price is uh, greater than or actual price is less than the theoretical price we will have reverse cash and carry arbitrage but in real life this is not a single price point it varies within a range so this is not a so what exactly is this so why it will be a range? It will be a range because of the transaction cost and also because of the difference in borrowing and lending grade. So theoretical price is not going to be a single price because of difference in borrowing lending, transaction cost, bid and ask spread all these will be factored in to calculate a, uh, calculate a range and if actual price is greater than the upper bound then we will have cash and carry arbitrage and if actual price is less than the lower bound. So,
So, in this range if the actual price remains then it will be a reverse cash and carry and if actual price is greater than the upper bound then it will be a cash and carry arbitrage. Now, uh, I will just take a, a simple example to show why uh, this uh, you know arbitrage is not going to be a single price point, but it is going to be a multi range of prices. Let us say uh, a particular share is quoting at in a exchange let us say price spot price of a particular share is rupees 99. How much is going to be the buyer, uh, buyer and seller uh, you know payment and receipt from the buyers and sellers point of view. Let us say if a buyer buys it at 99 it will be also paying uh, you know couple of uh, rupees as brokerage fee. So, how much is going to be the uh, cost for, uh, for the buyer? Let us say the brokerage fee is rupees 3. So, buyer is going to pay, buyer payment is going to be 99 plus 3, so 102 and seller's receipt is going to be seller will receive 99 but simultaneously seller will pay 3 rupees so 99 minus 3 is going to be 96 rupees so if you s when we uh, you know simple example so you have a price is 99 but buyer is going to be paying 102 and seller is going to be receiving 96 so this is also one reason why you will have a range of uh, theoretical forward price not a actual uh, not a single forward price. So, this particular example shows this if you see A and B is your upper and up lower bound and if actual price is greater than uh, if actual price is greater than this upper bound you will have cash and carry arbitrage and if your actual price is less than the lower bound you will have reverse cash and carry arbitrage and uh, see, uh, please focus on this formula if you see this transaction cost is deducted from the spot price at one point one side and transaction cost is added to the spot prices another side and you have different lending rate different borrowing rate so this is the reason why you will have a theoretical forward price as a range of prices now let's go to our uh, discussion uh, on how do we uh, you know value uh, commodity uh, futures contract and forward contracts when the commodity underlying has certain supply constraint or does not have a supply constraint. So, uh, let us first focus on the commodity uh, contracts where the underlying asset does not have supply constraint that means it is freely available anybody is interested to buy any amount of commodity at uh, that point of time it is available. So, in that case commodities uh, having without any supply constraint can be valued using your cash and carry model sorry it will be valued using your cost of carry model and any deviation from the cost of carry model price will result in uh, cash and carry arbitrage and reverse cash and carry arbitrage. So, the theoretical price will be within a specific range. Now, let us go to a commodity which has a supply constraint that means it is not available for to be traded to be bought and sold in the market. Typically, agricultural commodities have uh, supply constraint just before the harvest period. I am sure you must have noticed at some point of time you may have let us say potato price increasing uh, increasing for a substantial amount because the new crop is yet to be uh, arrived and uh, uh, not enough of old crop is available. So, in that case you may have experienced the potato price going up significantly high at given point of time. Now, at that kind of a situation we may have uh, the forward price deviating from the uh, cost of carry model. So, why that will happen let us understand. Now, let me take an example. 
let us say, so uh, we are today here we want to take a forward contract for 2 months and underlying is underlying is 2 month underlying is 2 months so <coughs> and this harvest is maybe expected uh, harvest is expected one and uh, one po one and half months one and half month later so what is the spot price because of the supply constraint let's say potato is quoting at 40 rupees in the spot market so you go to a spot market in local market or in a mandi important mandi potato is quoting at 40 rupees a kg so what is going to be based on uh, you know the cost of carry model so what is going to be the theoretical price f0 t and t is your two months so s40 plus some storage uh, charges multiplied into e to the power r t uh, is going to be your let us say 40 45 rupees. So, this is going to be our theoretical price. Let us see in the market the 2 months forward price or future price is quoting at let us say 39 rupees. So, this F theoretical is theoretical price is 45 rupees and F actual is 39 rupees. So, this is the you go to the commodity exchange and 2 months uh, for futures contract is quoting at 39. So, just merely comparing these two prices you may say that there is some arbitrage opportunity and if you recall this leads to a reverse cash and carry arbitrage when F actual is less than F theoretical. So, it have a reverse cash and carry arbitrage. So, as part of a reverse cash and carry arbitrage what do we do? I am sure you will be able to answer this question. So, let me take you to the reverse cash and carry arbitrage. <coughs> if you see we will be selling the underlying asset at the spot price and simultaneously entering into a long forward contract. So, let me highlight on this sentence selling the underlying asset at the spot price. So, if somebody wants to undertake a cash and carry arbitrage, so what should be his strategy at this point of time? So, the his strategy at this point of time is to go and sell potato, but who is going to who can sell the potato? The party or the people who are holding potato. So, uh, uh, you know uh, considering that the potato is in short supply, so there will not be much uh, there will not be many people to who will be willing to sell potato because the you know the uh, entities who would be holding potato they would be holding to do their run their day to day operation let us say potato manufacturing potato chips manufacturing company may be holding uh, uh, you know some um, 200 tons of potato and uh, this company may consider entering into a reverse arbitrage and uh, may sell the potato in the market and uh, try to get some benefit from the uh, reverse uh, cash and carry arbitrage. However, if it does so, then it may not have the potato to run its plant and uh, you know start uh, run its plant and uh, uh, you know have enough of potato chips to be sold in the market. So, in that case its production will be hampered, its market share may go down. So, even if a company is holding potato that company may not be interested to undertake reverse cash and carry arbitrage. So, what basically I am driving is that there can be a situation for commodity underlying where you have a opportunity to undertake arbitrage but there will not be many people to undertake arbitrage because the underlying commodity is in short supply. So, in that case we 
ex experience a situation where you have the future price is less than the spot price. Let us focus on this e example here. So, what is the actual future price? The actual future price is 39 rupees and what is the spot price? Spot price is 40 rupees. So, the actual future price is less than uh, you know the spot price of the commodity and this kind of a situation is known as backwardation in a commodity uh, you know jargon. So, what exactly is a if you say this one forward or future price may be below the price based on the cost of carry that is f actual may be less than the f theoretical and that is known as your backwardation and why this uh, why this happens this happens because you have uh, supply uh, restriction or supply constraint uh, for the underlying commodity now, this discussion on um, backwardation gives rise to a concept called a convenience yield. So, what exactly is the convenience yield? Please, uh, you know, focus on this. Uh, the, you know, the explanation of uh, convenience yield. Uh, suppose a manufacturer is using a commodity as a raw material would prefer to hold the physical commodity as physical inventory smoothens the production process and helps it to maintain its market share. These intangible benefits are coined as convenience yield. So, the party who is holding the underlying the the asset uh, itself is giving certain benefit and that benefit is resulting in uh, you know the forward price or futures price uh, being lesser than the spot price. Now, let us go to you know model uh, you know what is the convenience yield. So, when we do some adjustment to the cost of carry model, we calculate the convenience yield. If you see the formula which is mentioned here, F 0 t in real life is equal to is less than your S 0. So, uh, when uh, we equate this or when we uh, you know using a formula when we equate this, we bring in a concept called y if you see that S 0 into e to the power r plus u minus y into t. So, this y is nothing but your convenience yield. Convenience yield is expressed as a percentage of spot price. So, uh, again here uh, one thing I would like to tell you is that convenience yield is never available in the market to be you know to be used in the calculation. The convenience yield is calculated from the price when F 0 t is less than your S 0 into e to the power uh, S 0 into e to the power r plus t then we we use the cal we calculate uh, the y. Let us take an example. Let us say spot is as we go back spot is uh, let us say as we mentioned 40 rupees uh, u is let us say present value of u is 1.25 rupees and r is 10 percent and t is uh, 2 months which is 1 by 6 and you have suppose f actual is quoting at let us say uh, uh, 34 rupees. So, when we calculate 34 is equal to 40 plus 1.25 into e to the power uh, 10 percent minus y into 1 by 6 and when we when we equate this we calculate y that is going to be our convenience yield. That means, this this is the return which the owner of the asset is getting by holding the asset and uh, like your uh, or if you recall in um, uh, re basic finance we discuss something called a real uh, rate of return and we do not get real rate of return anywhere uh, you know directly given to us. 
So, we calculate the real return from the nominal uh, return, nominal interest rate and the uh, you know inflation rate and we uh, adjusting the nominal rate of return with the inflation rate we calculate the real rate of return similarly this convenience yield it's a return but it is not available directly anywhere by equating uh, this theoretical uh, future price with the uh, with the spot price we uh, theoretical futures price with the um, with the actual spot price actual uh, forward price we calculate uh, we calculate the convenience yield now uh, so let's uh, uh, discuss little bit on what is a contango and backwardation contango is a market where the forward price or future price is more than the spot price or a price of a distant delivery contract is higher than the less distant delivery contract that is spot is great spot uh, that is m1 is greater than spot and m2 is greater than m1 that is a market where we call it this market is known as a contango market and which is a backwardation market so what is a backwardation market Back backwardation market is uh, m2 is less than m1 and m1 is less than uh, m1 is less than your uh, spot it may so happen m2 can be also less than spot so if uh, degree of backwardation is substantially higher so you been you may have a uh, longer distant uh, longer uh, maturity contract uh, quoting at a price less than the spot price now does the contango and backwardation happen in real life yes it happens in real life let's i'll quickly take you through this detail I have downloaded from the NCDEX website. If you see uh, this particular picture, uh, this particular uh, you know detail, you have a, a gold spot is 28,408 uh, and what is the uh, M1, M2, M3? M1, M2, M3 is higher than all these three contracts are higher than the spot and if you see M2 is higher than M1 and M M3 is higher than M2. So, this is a pure typical market of a contango market. Let us go back to this contract Jira. So, what is the spot price? Jira spot price is Jira spot price is 16,683, but what is the M1 price? M1 price is 16,440 and M2 price is 16,570. So, this M1 and M2 are less than your spot price. So, this part you have a backwardation market, but this two price series is more than the uh, spot price and this is uh, will be a uh, this will be a uh, contango market. So, if you see the Jira forward curve is combination of both back uh, contango and back uh, contango and backwardation. Similarly, you have refined oil forward curve, we have soybean forward curve, we have sugar forward curve and uh, turmeric forward curve. So, uh, you know it is uh, some market, some, some commodity may be purely uh, contango, some commodity may be purely backwardation and some commodity may be combination of uh, combination of uh, contango and backwardation. Um, uh, this this kind of uh, you know situation, um, all kind of situation we may get to see depending upon the uh, you know commodity contract which we are considering. Now, <coughs> uh, with this, we'll come to our uh, uh, you know end of our discussion today. So we started uh, with our discussion on uh, contang. We started with our discussion on uh, what is a uh, reverse cash and carry and what is cash and carry and how traders can take benefit from uh, this cash and carry and reverse cash and carry uh, mod, uh, you know arbitrage opportunity. We also discussed what is contango and backwardation and backwardation happens only when you have the forward price or future price is less than the spot price and contango happens when the spot price is less than the forward price and future price 
and in the real life we can have all kinds of possibilities we can have contango pure contango or we can have pure backwardation and we or we can have uh, contango and backwardation for uh, different commodities of course another uh, you know disc another important part which needs to be highlighted is that uh, a commodity may be purely contango today may be some time later it may move into backwardation or vice versa so with this i will end up this session today and uh, looking forward to continuing with this uh, you know pricing and valuation aspect of commodity futures and forwards in the subsequent ses uh, session thanking all of you